Hi, my name is Nick, and in today's video, I'm going to see if I could swap out the derailleur hanger of this Ultegra 6770 first generation DI2 rear derailleur with a newer 6800 11 speed derailleur hanger or derailleur plates, inner and outer plates. So, hopefully, in this video, I'll show you if it does or it does not work. So here's what I'm planning on using, some Allen wrenches. I have two Phillips head screwdrivers of different size heads in order to remove a screw here and then the parts. So I'm going to be using this 6800 outer plate and there's the part number. And then I have the 6800 inner plate and it's the GS type. So let's take a look at this inner and outer plate here and as you can see from center to center between the pulleys it's roughly 55 millimeters and that has a total tooth capacity of 33 teeth. The GS here, the medium cage from center to center is approximately 85 or 86 millimeters and this has a 39 tooth capacity. Now let me explain that. So my first scenario here, I'm going to be using the same compact crank set, a 3450 and a 3450. For the SS, or the shorter cage, you have 16 tooth difference, which is 50 minus 34. And then in the rear, you're going to have a 17 tooth difference, 1128. The capacity is 33 teeth, and that's the maximum you can have a 28 in the rear if you're using a 3450. So 16 plus 17 is a 33 tooth capacity. Now if you move on to the medium cage, Shimano claims it has a 39 tooth capacity. So I have 16 tooth difference in the front, 23 teeth rear in the difference in the rear, and then 16 plus 23 is equal to a 39 tooth capacity. Going from what I have a 28 to a 34 is about 21% lower of a gear if I keep this same 34 up front and hopefully I can use it in order to climb easier up 20% grade hills. In order to remove the inner and outer plate here, there is this Phillips head screw that I'll try to show you here, right there, that you, once you remove, this could swing all the way out. There's a little stopper here on this other side. There's a stopper, as you can see. And then you can swing that out. You're gonna use some Allen wrenches to remove this screw here and the other screw on this side and then there's another Allen wrench right here and then this whole thing pulls out and there's a spring inside that pulls this derailleur back. Alright so what I'm going to do first is kind of spread it apart and it's sprung load so I'm going to hold this with my finger here and then this screw I'm going to use a smaller Phillips head and go ahead and unscrew this portion here, the Phillips head screw, make sure you don't lose this and slowly don't let go of it, might swing around and it comes out like there. Now I can access this one and these Allen and remove the jockey wheels. So I have a three millimeter here, and they're on actually pretty tight. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if you can see it there. Loosen this up. I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew this one. And after I take this one out, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the other side on the back side. And these pulleys, or sorry, the jockey wheels here are for 10 speed, so I could probably reuse them and see it's a little dirty here. Also keep note of where the spring tension ends up. So it's normally way down here. It's normally like this, the rear derailleur, but after you lose the spring tension it ends up here because when we put the new inner and outer cages on or plates, you're going to have to install it like this with little tension. And the other thing I also like about these DI2s is there's no cable, it's electro well it's electronic cable. 
So when I put it back in, I don't have to adjust the rear derailleur, just put it right back and it should be aligned perfectly. So again, a three millimeter here and hold on to this cage. If I want to just hold the bottom part of the cage and loosen this to get this upper jockey wheel out. Just several screws and turns here and it should remove the inner plate right off. And now there's the inner plate and then we're going to have to remove this and that's where the spring is inside the back of this Holtega rear derailleur. For this you could use a 5 millimeter Allen and well, this one's on a little tighter that's why it's a 5 mil. Do this a few turns. And there's a spring and a bunch of components in there. So this is the first time I'm removing it. Let's go see what's inside. A lot of screw. And again, keep note of where this portion comes in. It's gonna come in just like that. And let's go take a look inside here. And you see there's a hole here on this left side. And that's where the spring goes in. Let's take a close look at this outer cage. Or outer plate for the short cage. This is the short version. And note also on here where the spring attaches. And it looks like it attaches on this left side here. Let me see if I can focus it. Maybe a little hard to see, but right here, that's where part of the spring is attached to this outer plate. It's on the opposite end of, of the part that connects to the derailleur. And also keep in, keep in mind that there is a little washer right here they you don't want to lose either part of this okay by hand this little spring doesn't want to come out so I'll, I'll take another tool a flathead screwdriver and I'll put it in here and we just wiggle it around and there we go to loosen it out and now I could pull this out and we could take a look at this a little screw in there too maybe this comes out it does so push this part comes out from the top and put that here and also the back side the five millimeter bolt I could slide that back and out and now let's get our other Cage and take a look at the differences. Well, since I do have my scale, I'm going to see how much, if I'm able to make this conversion, how much weight. This is 27.5 grams, which is the SS, the short cage, and the GS, just alone, the, uh, what is that, the outer plate, I believe, 26 grams, 38.4 grams. So taking a look at the visual differences between the Ultegra 6770 and the 6800, already I could see that the spring mounting locations are a little different from each other. The cage is quite a bit longer. Let me line it up a little more straight here. As we measure that this one's quite a bit longer, which is good. This one comes with a mounting screw, so I guess I don't need to keep the other one. I'll just put it back on the other derailleur. Now the inserts here, or the part that goes into the derailleur, they do look quite similar. I'm going to line them up next to each other. And it looks like they are the same length, which is very good. And then size-wise, and it looks like they use the same width circle. So that should be good too. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this screw just to get it out of the way here. Maybe put it somewhere safe. 
Now I want to put the spring in and the components from the 6770 and see if it fits on this. So I'll start off with this mounting screw and the extension. Okay, so I'll just slide this in here. And I might run into, nope. I thought we'd run into the first problem already. And those two seem to fit in okay. And then from here, I can go ahead and try to put the spring on. So the spring here actually looks like it fits in this one. And it might, yep, it fits in both of them. So it fits in here. And then, oh, that one didn't want to come out as well. And it also fits in the upper one. So it was closer related to the upper one because in the short cage here it was inside this upper one. But I don't have an upper one here. They're side to side. So that might be a problem. We'll see. So let's try using this one first, this upper one, because it's a little closer to the upper from where it was mounted on the short cage. The short cage, I believe it was also mounted. The spring was mounted right there. So when I took it out, this was nearly vertical. So I'm going to go ahead and line up this. Let's go zoom back in and show you that the spring is right here and that has to line up with the inside notch which is up top there. Okay so I put it in while lining this up as I mentioned it was on the top and that's another thing this little piece here has to go over here and it falls out and if you try to put it in while this is on the top so I have to kind of do it blindly and and it looks like it yep, springs back and then I'm gonna have to screw in with five millimeter and see if this screws right back in so I screw this back in maybe not real tight yet and it springs back good sign so far Okay, I tightened it and it actually has to go this way, not to the, has to go counterclockwise to spring it. So I did it counterclockwise and right here now I'm going to have to hold this. I'm going to have to turn the camera off. Let's see if I can hold this. And let me take my glove off for better dexterity. So I'm going to hold it here. And then I have to get the screwdriver and try to get this back in screw and then after we put this in just go ahead and tighten it down all right so I took a little let's see practice or many attempts to screw that in here and again using my smaller of the two Phillips head go ahead and tighten the screw here let me show you Right here we have, that's the stopper, and it's going to stop. Now for the jockey wheels, I have to make sure that, I believe this is on, oh, let's see how this goes. Yep, it's going to go like this, because this part's on the bottom, because I know when it swings back and you want to loosen it, you push on this thing here. So it's going to go with the rear derailleur like this with the tab on the bottom left. This jockey wheel is directional so I believe this one goes on the bottom because it's going to rotate this way as the chain comes around and loops up as you pedal. So I'm going to put this one on. As you can tell I have it says sealed ceramic bush so I do have the ceramic bearings the Shimano version I can't tell the difference. So if you get the regular ones versus ceramic, I don't know if it's a quarter of a watt savings or less, but I can't feel the difference. So I'm looking at the back side, and I'm going to go ahead and put the first one and make sure it slides right in there and use my Allen key to go ahead and tighten this one in. Just go ahead and line it up. 
Let's see when you get it lined up and start tightening this one on with the three mil. I'm not going to make it too tight. Oh, and also before you tighten it real tight, I made sure that I tightened the five mil on pretty snugly right there. So as you can tell, it's quite loose. Give them a little more of a turn. And next, I'm going to put on the lower bearing. Now this one I have to pull out a little bit because it likes with the spring it likes to stay there. But then I'm going to tighten that one in. So I'm going to put this here, and this goes through here. And then I'm going to swing this out. Like out, getting pinched. While holding this, and it's going to be a little tricky, you just hold this. I guess I could have done this beforehand. Ooh, I think I got it. Oh, but I missed something. I had to take it off try again. Alright, well, I found I got to hold both of them at once together. And now I could go ahead and hopefully tighten these on. And it looks like the same screws fit as well which is good news. So now I can give this a little more of a snug. Ow. Yes. There we go. Tighten that a little more snug and then on the back side tighten this more snugly. Oh that's pretty loose. And make sure the bearings still spin. Or the jockey wheels. There we go, that's the ceramic one, very nice. Alright, so far I'm quite impressed, everything fit okay, I didn't run into too many hiccups, and this is a medium cage on the 6770 Ultegra Di2, and the reason I'm doing this is because if I upgrade it to the Ultegra 8000, I'm going to need rear shifter, front shifter, I'm going to need a cassette to go to 11 speed, 11 speed chain, and if you don't already have 11 speed hub and rear wheel, then you're going to need that too. Along with you might need shifters, a new battery, and that's going to be quite expensive. This for the medium cage was about a little under $40 shipped on eBay, so hopefully I could get lower gears on my 10 speed electronic shifting. All right, so here's the rear derailleur back onto the bike with a Sunrace derailleur hanger extender and pay attention to the angle of this here. At first it was vertical and the upper jockey wheel was touching the cassette on most of the teeth and now it just touches on the uppermost tooth. So I have to move this back even further. So as you see, when I shift through the gears, this is how it's supposed to be until, so I'm on the second gear now and watch when I get to the lowest gear. It touches and it hits. So again, here's a closer look at the first gear. And it rubs just a little bit, so I'm rather than messing with the B screw, I'm going to pull this back just a little bit and then retighten it. So I moved it back and you can tell there's some space now between the lowest gear and the jockey wheel. However, when I go down to the lowest, smallest sprocket in the rear, there's a considerable amount of spacing there. So it compromises the shifting just a little bit. As you see from here to here, it's almost a good centimeter now difference because this derailleur, the way it swings out, was not designed to swing, you know, at an angle up and down. It kind of swings more forward to account for smaller cassette. So this extra to help the extra derailleur hanger extender helps bring this lower to get to your first gear, but then it's also lower, so it compromises shifting just a little bit in these smaller 11 tooth gears. So it looks like this, I found an ideal angle of just kind of moving it back and forth several times, adjusting it, and now I could shift through the gears pretty well. And on the lowest gear, as you can see, there's less than a centimeter gap here. It almost connects pretty close, and there's no notice, noticeable noise or 
gear clunking or jumping, so it looks like it's going to work pretty well. And there's another look at a medium cage on this old Tegra 10 speed DI2 rear derailleur. And again, it's the 6800 outer and inner plate. Well, I am so happy I was able to get that 6800 outer and inner plate onto the 6700 series rear derailleur. So I'm able to use my larger gear range. Before I was able to use the lowest, the 34 front and the 34 rear, however, with a longer chain, however, when it got down to about the third gear or the fourth gear, the derailleur would be all the way, oh, I'm sorry, all the way back and slack. And then if I hit any bumps, the chain would swing out and rub the tire, which could be real dangerous. So fortunately, I was able to swap in the mid cage and now I'm able to use a full range of gears while the rear derailleur is able to hold tension onto the chain. Well, I hope you found this video helpful, and if it did, please give it a thumbs up, and feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. I plan on making some more great content in the future for the YouTube channel. Thanks a lot for watching, and as always, have a most wonderful day.